Welcome to this tutorial on how to use ImageJ to measure cell length. So the first thing you're going to have to do is download ImageJ to your computer. To do this, go to Google or Firefox or whatever and type in ImageJ. When we do that, we see the first hit is from NIH and it says here ImageJ for download. Just click that button. And then depending upon the OS you're using, go to it, click the, the, the little link there to download the bundle you need for whichever operating system you're using. And once you have it downloaded and all set up and all that sort of thing, it's, you can go ahead and open up ImageJ and it's going to look like this. ImageJ is just a small box here that opens up on the screen. So the first thing you're going to want to do, obviously, is open up a file. So go to File, click Open, go to where you go in your computer to find your files, and open up a JPEG or a TIFF file, ideally, that you want to do that's got your cell, cells in it to measure their cell length. So click that Open button, and here's my file. And what we're looking at here is uh, spirochetes. In this case, they're leptospira. And so we can see here all the little, you know, spirochetes, and they're happy. And at the bottom, the first thing we're going to want to do is set the scale. So we can see we have down here a scale bar for 10 micrometers that we um, captured into the image when we first took the image. Uh, click the zoom button that you see here at the top. Click that zoom button. We're just going to zoom in on that so it's easier for us to grab it. We can zoom back out in a little bit. And then you're going to want to click this line button right here. So this line button will let you make uh, straight segmented freehand lines. I'll show you that in a second, how you do that. And all you're going to do is use the straight uh, tool. And just from the end of the scale and making a straight line, go to the other end of the scale just like that. Looks pretty good. You can adjust it if you want a little bit. If it's a little bit off, you can see that little finger shows up for the hand. And just like that looks pretty good. Now that we have it the exact length of the scale bar, go to Analyze, click Set Scale. And in this case, we can see our unit of length is micrometers. We're going to put that in there. And our known distance in this case is 10 micrometers. So if we go like that, you click OK, and our scale is now set. Now you can zoom back out at this point. And to do that, go back to the zoom function and use the right click button on your mouse to zoom back out. So left click zooms in, right click zooms out. And now you're going to use this to basically go to different parts of your image if you want. And you're going to start actually grabbing, we're not going to use that one, but we're going to start looking and actually measuring these spirochetes. So for example, right here, we can see a spirochete at the top. It looks pretty good. I'm going to click right at the beginning of it one time. Maybe, here we go. One time. Oh, stop being finicky. <laughs> there we go. I'll click it, hold it down, and then release at the end. So I'm doing the exact length of that spirochete again, just like that. And then if I click Control M, or I go up to Analyze and I click Measure here, same thing, Control M, and it's going to give me a measurement. You can see the second that pops up, we get our results, and it's saying that this spire key is 6.224 micrometers in length. We can see there's another spire key down here, so I can measure that one as well. And then I can say here's the spire key right here, and I can measure this one as well. And you're just going to keep on doing that, and you're only going to want to use the spire key to obviously your, our cells that are in the plane of focus. So for example, up here at the top, this spirochete up here in this area, it sort of looks like it's out of the plane of focus. So I'm not going to want to measure that one because it's not going to be correct. This one over here as well, it's out of the plane of focus. Something weird is going on there. Now what you're going to have to do when you're doing this is go around to the entire image. Let's see if we can make it bigger. Okay. And, and capture every single cell you see in your, in, in, in your image that can be captured. So if something, again, is out of focus, up here at the top, we can see this spire key is not fully in the frame. It's actually falling out of the frame. So in this case, we wouldn't want to capture that one because it's not in the frame. So we might be missing some of the length of that spire key or cell. Over here on the edge, I'd also probably avoid these two. I would avoid this one right here because, again, it looks like it could be out of focus, something going on. This one at the top, though, right here, I would definitely capture this one. This one's pretty easy to measure. Let's make sure it's an accurate measurement. Grab just like that. All right, and control one is going to save it for us. Down here, the same thing. This one looks pretty good. I can grab this one. I could grab this one, et cetera, et cetera. This one I probably wouldn't grab. This one also seems out of focus. Might be two spirochetes. This one also, you could grab it. It looks like two spirochetes. Just make sure whenever you're doing this that you stay within the same parameters. If you say this is going to be one spirochete, all the other images you look at, for example, this is a wild type. If I'm comparing this to a mutant, make sure you're always grabbing the same. Now, it does that weird angle move, so I can't really get a good measurement using the straight line. But if I right click here, I can go to a segmented line or a freehand line. In this case, I can just do clicks to get to the end length and then do a measurement that way. So you could do it like that as well. 
Down here at the bottom, this is actually a little bit of like almost like a biofilm formation. It's a bunch of spirochetes all stuck together. We wouldn't measure that at all. If we don't see spirochetes or cells that are separated, again, we'd be concerned that maybe we're not getting the actual measurement of that cell. So therefore, we'd just avoid it and actually go to a different slide to grab our next measurement. So just to back up again, as a reminder, when you're doing these sort of measurements, um, make sure that it's in the plane of focus, that the, that the spirochete or the bacterial cell that you're looking at is clear. Uh, make sure that it's not pointed up or down in the Z plane because obviously it's not going to be the correct measurement. Uh, make sure you use the segmented line when you need to or you can use the straight line when it's when it's accurate to do so. Um, and make sure you set your scale to be good with. Now, so the next last thing you're going to want to do before you go in and actually do your statistical analysis is move these measurements into an Excel spreadsheet. So for example, I can grab these right here. I've got an Excel spreadsheet already opened up. This was SNAP 49. I'm always going to measure which SNAP it was or which image it was. So that way I can always go back and say, in this image, these are the measurements I found. So that way if something goes on later on um, and I have questions about, I'm looking at my lengths in one SNAP versus another, I could always go back and look at that. Now if I wanted to go on, maybe my next, my next SNAP would be SNAP 50, et cetera, et cetera. And I'd, I'd capture those again in the Excel spreadsheet. Um, I would actually also go ahead, if I were you, and write down at least the length there, so you know that it was length in this in this uh, in this column. If you want to do the same thing for the other columns, you could do that. It's not a bad idea. So you have that there. It's always going to be the same with image J how it how it uh, measures them out. And then obviously later on for our statistical analysis we use in my lab, it's easy then to grab all these values directly out, put it into the software we use for statistical analysis, and move on. The last thing I would do obviously is change your um, your spreadsheet name. In this case, we could label it wild type, and it might be comparing it to different mutants that I have in my lab. So we'll say mutant one, for example, something like that. Um, and that would be about it. So that's all it really takes. It's really, really simple to use ImageJ to do your software or your image analysis. Um, and I hope you found this useful. Thanks for your time.